Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm super excited to share with you things that you can do with just your mouse and options in Rhino with your mouse that are gonna change the way that you model. Okay, these are small, simple changes you can do in the options to actually show commands show up on your cursor, distances, common mistakes that people make during modeling that can completely be averted with a few simple changes. So if you wanna learn more, just stick around. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, guys, let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to use your middle mouse button more accurately. OK, so let's say, for example, I was working on this column over here, this footing column here. And as I zoom in, I want to work on the top of it. Well, it's really hard for me to actually just see the top, right? Because I'm my zoom, like as my mouse clicks in and out, is really difficult to just get uh, that top into view. It's really annoying. This is one of the most annoying things in Rhino. Even if I would just want to rotate about this guy right here, I can't. Like if I try to rotate using the right mouse button, I'm kind of rotating about like a point somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, you know. So. So this is where I really use the middle mouse button. So go ahead and click that. And for most of us, we see this guy, right? This toolbar, to be completely honest, like I've never used. This is completely useless to me. Um, so let me show you a way better use for your middle mouse button. Go ahead to Tools. Go to Options. Okay, and under Mouse, make sure that instead of pop up this toolbar, which is what your middle mouse button is doing right now, go ahead to run this macro. And in there, put underscore ZS. And what ZS is, is zoom selected. So whatever you select, if you hit the middle mouse button, it will zoom onto that selected item. Let's try it out. So again, click this guy, okay, or whatever model you have in front of you. Use the middle mouse button, and it'll zoom right onto that object. And look, now when I rotate, I'm actually rotating about this object, right? Not some imaginary point in the middle of nowhere. And my screen gets filled with the object I'm looking at. If I want to work on this top face, I can use control and shift to select the top face. And again, use the middle mouse click. And there we go. Now I'm rotating about that top face extremely useful. If I zoom back out and say again, I want to work on this corner over here, right? And it's really hard for me to just like zoom into that corner. Notice like I'm zooming now and it's, it's going to be pretty hard uh, to get where I need to go. So I'm going to go ahead and control shift, click that middle click. And now look, I'm rotating about that corner. I can work on this corner much more effectively. Same way just going in and out of models, right? If I'm on the outside of this model, I just want to jump in for a moment. I can click on, you know, piece of furniture in there or, you know, this cabinet door, just use the middle mouse button. And now I'm actually inside uh, the house, right? So, it's really useful for just being able to zoom in and out, especially if you're working at a large scale and then you want to work on like something on a super tiny scale. Uh, you still want to just be able to quickly zoom in and out of these models using the middle mouse button. The next step I want to show you is have you guys ever done this accidentally where you're working in your model and you accidentally like drag something out of place and then you keep working because you dragged it so little it doesn't really register. And you save your file, you come back the next day and you realize you look at this corner again and you're like, oh my God, something's wrong. Like this thing slipped and now I don't know exactly where it belonged because I can't use undo because this was like, you know, hundreds of commands ago. So how am I supposed to know where this goes? So this happens all the time. So one thing is, you know, just do a preventative measure. You know, what's wrong is like most people are able to just drag their objects just like accidentally with their mouse like this, you see? And this is really bad. So what you want to do, let me undo these first so I don't actually ruin my own model. Okay, so to have a preventative measure in the first place, go to Tools, Options, and again, under Mouse, you see here, click and drag. Always put this on. Drag selected objects only. This means you'd actually have to select the object first before you drag it. So look here, now I can not drag this column. It actually selects it, and only once it's selected, can I drag it? So that's one like preventative measure you can put in place that helps you from, you know, saving you from doing something accidentally. All right. The next set of tips I want to show you guys is how to actually like set your camera using your mouse. So let's say, for example, I want a nice interior view. 
all right, so I'm going to go ahead and go inside my model, right, and try to find a nice view. So maybe I zoom into one of these cabinet doors, and I just want to look left, and I can't. Or I just want to change the height of where my camera is. Uh, you know, this becomes extremely annoying. Uh, let me change this to a little bit better width on my camera, let's say. There we go. Okay, so I just want to look left, and I'm not actually looking left. I'm actually rotating about a point. Okay, I'll show you that uh, by, if you go to three view, for example, you just type in three view, all right, it'll show you something like this, where it'll show you a top view, your front view, and, you know, your perspective view. So in your perspective view, if you hit F6, it'll actually show you your camera. You see my camera over here? This is where my camera is, and this is where it's looking. And the same thing over here. Notice that as I rotate, my camera is rotating. You see that point over here? that's your actual camera position. You don't want the camera to rotate and the target to be the same. You see the target is the same here, it's not moving. I want the target to rotate and the camera to be the same. So there's a couple of things you can do. One is if you wanna move up and down, right? Hold down the shift key and the right mouse button, right? This kinda of allows you to go up and down. So if you're not at the right height, say you were too low over here and you wanna go a little bit higher, use the shift command to kind of pan in the perspective view, and this will allow you to go up and down. The next thing you can do is zooming in and out. So if you want to zoom in and out, instead of using the middle mouse wheel to go in and out, which is a little choppy, hold down the control key, and then use your right mouse button. It's a lot smoother. I use this type of zoom all the time. It's much more effective. And then, of course, the most important one, which is keeping the camera still but moving the target. Okay, in order to do that, you want to use Control and Alt together. So hold down Control and Alt, and then your right mouse button. Go ahead and drag with your right mouse button. And you see, look over here in my plan view and in the front view. As I do this, the camera is staying the same. It's almost like it's on a tripod somewhere, and I'm just rotating and pointing the camera in another direction. This is exactly what you want to use to set your views. It's way more effective, so I can look this way, maybe pan a little bit to the left or a little bit higher or lower, zoom out a little bit just to get this chair in view. Again, maybe just tilt a little bit using Control and Alt, and there we go, now I have my interior view. It makes it so much easier to set up if you start using some of those shortcuts along with your mouse. And the last thing I want to show you guys, let me go back into my top view here, for example. All right, if I'm drawing, say I'm drawing a rectangle, Look at my mouse uh, cursor, okay? On my cursor, it actually says first corner of rectangle, okay? So instead of my eye having to go up here and reading what Rhino is asking me in the command line, it actually just shows me right on my cursor. And I can click, and then it tells me the next thing I'm looking for. Okay, so how do I get my command prompts onto my actual cursor over here, right? Also, how do I, for example, here, if I want to select if I want to circle and I click the center somewhere, no, look, it's asking me for the diameter, and as I drag, it's actually showing me the diameter that I'm generating, and look, even when I come over here and it snaps to this rectangle, it's showing me that I'm snapping to an end point and an intersection point, right? Or a midpoint, or somewhere near, so or the center of that rectangle. So this is extremely useful to have this information right on your cursor, and where do you actually find that? Well, to do that, again, go to Tools and go to Options, except over here, go to Modeling Aids, and use that little drop-down and go to Cursor Tooltips. And under Cursor Tooltips, depending on what you have on, I mean, you can experiment with these, but, you know, over the years, I've realized that the ones I really need the most are O-Snap, Distance, and Command Prompt. So the Command Prompt tells me exactly what's saying over here, what Rhino is asking me in the command prompt. Distance is the actual like numerical value that you're moving something. And O snap is uh, the snaps I showed you earlier, like endpoint, intersection, midpoint, etc. And seeing that on your cursor is just invaluable, right? So again, if I was drawing an arc, it's asking me the start of the arc, it's giving me how far I'm going away, it's telling me where I'm snapping. And again, so it really helps you like confirm that you are actually intersecting with this rectangle and there we go, you know. So these little mouse tips have really helped me out. I hope they help you in your workflow as well, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.